Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about digital logic. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, Karnaugh maps and how to use them to simplify a uh, truth table into a very simplified logic expression. So I'm going to start first with a four-variable Karnaugh map, or a, a two-variable Karnaugh map. And a Karnaugh map looks like a grouping, uh, a grid of cells. And uh, these are my variables, A and B, and they each have two different states. So for A, this row represents 1, this row represents 0. And I'm going to do the AND gate first. So we all know that AND looks like this. And if I were to represent that in a Karnaugh map, it's going to end up looking like this, uh, where if A is 0 and B is 0, then the result is 0. And let's say for this cell right here, if B is 1, which could be these two, and A is 0, which makes it this one, uh, the result is 0. All right. You're never really going to use a Karnaugh map for two variables. If you were to do three variables, you might have it like this. And for uh, how you number it, it is in gray code. And to give you just a quick refresher on gray code, uh, a one bit gray code is like that, 0, 1. And if, it, if you're creating reflected gray code, you're going to create a reflection line, mirror what's here to down there, above the fold, is zeros and below it is ones. Create a three bit gray code. We'll just mirror again. So everything up here down to here. And then above it, it's all zeros. And below, it's ones. So um, anyway, we're not doing three bit on this one. This cell right here represents A bar, B bar, C bar. This cell here represents A, and then if we look at it, it's B, C. This one would be A bar, B bar, C. Okay. Now I'm just going to jump to uh, a a four variable Karnaugh map because that's when it starts to get uh, useful. So if I have A, B, C, D, okay, I didn't draw that the best. So remember, gray code. Okay. The goal of a Karnaugh map is to find groupings of ones or zeros, and I'm just going to stick with ones for this uh, for this video. But finding groupings of them that are two to the n by two to the m in dimension. All right. So if I have a grouping of just one, say all these others are zero. This would be a 2 to the 0, or 2 to the 1st by 2 to the 1st grouping. All right, and if I had this, that's 2 to the 1st wide and 2, uh, oh, I was right the first time. It's 2 to the 0 by 2 to the 0. This one's 2 to the 0 by 2 to the 1st tall.
All right. I'm going to just create a uh, set of zeros and ones. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the largest possible groupings. And in this case, here is one of them. And then I have to determine what is common to all of these cells. And I can say that since we have all cases here, we can just ignore that. Uh, in here, we have C bar, D bar is common to all of them. So C bar, D bar. I'm just going to follow that up with black below it because I'm not sure you can see it. Seems awfully wimpy to me, uh, the way it looks. Anyway, uh, now uh, I could do a grouping like that, but this isn't minimized. So I'm trying to find my most minimal logic expression. And so I'm going to instead choose to circle those because this is a 2 to the first by 2 to the first grouping. All right, and so what's common to those? All right, well, uh, looking across the rows, we have B is common. So B is 1 in these two rows. Whereas A, A is 0 up here and 1 down here, it's not common to those. And in these two columns, what's common? And if we look, we can see that C bar is common. Just in case you can't see that. And then uh, we're going to do one more. What do we do with these? Well, once again, we could circle that, but that's not the most minimized logic. Uh, Instead, we're going to think about it like Pac-Man or Asteroids. If you remember those video games, your ship could come off of one side of the screen and come onto the other, or it could go up the top and then up through the bottom. And uh, that's what we have here. So uh, you can do that. You could even, if I had ones in those corners, we could do around like that because it wraps both ways. But in this case, what's common to them? Well, over here we have B and then uh, here we have D bar. And so what we have here is our minimized logic to represent uh, this output of the circuit. Okay. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a six-variable Carnot map now. And this is where it really starts to get confusing. Six-variable Carnot maps have eight cells in each direction. Okay, now remember we have to number them with gray code. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, do I have 8? Yes. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Oops. And I'm not listening to myself here. Uh, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. All right. And then 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0.
I'm just going to continue these lines up because it gets a little confusing. Uh, this is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0. Okay, now that we have it drawn, let's take a look at how things work with a six variable Carnot map. In the four variable, we were looking at how they were just adjacent, whether it's wrapping around the, the sides or just in here. With the six variable, it becomes more complicated. You have to start thinking of a little sort of a rainbow going across here and uh, one this way as well, connecting the rows. Um, so if I were to do uh, ones here, these are actually adjacent with a six variable Carnot map because these share E and F. Uh, that's, that's in common to them. So if I were to label these two, it would be A bar, B bar, C, E, F. That is the minimized term for these ones. Okay, and likewise, to get really tricky, uh, if I were to do that, all four of these share, you know, this arc of the rainbow. <laughs> so uh, now I could describe that what's common to them is B bar C, oops, That was supposed to be A bar, B bar, C. But uh, now, if we've got the 4 in there, it's B bar, C, E, F would be a minimized way of representing them. And of course, if I have, say I had these ones here, you could still circle them like that, and you could say, what is common to all of them? Well, definitely D, E, F, bar, all of them, D, E, F. D, E, F, bar, 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 like that. And over here, we have in common uh, B. So it just kind of gets tricky with the six variable Carnot map, but I think you can see where I'm going with this. Um, hopefully, it's helped. Uh, if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos about how to work with digital logic, check out my YouTube channel. I'm Jack Buffington for robotbrigade.com.